Oh, guys, I'm scared. It's the end of a season, and we all know what that means. The annual Make Niren, aka FNG, aka One Knee Man, aka Dead Trimothy, look bad in front of people on the internet. It's time to react to our Premier League predictions from the start of the season, all right? With the dust settled and the season now done, with our winners and losers and everybody in between, YouTubers across the space can now see whether we actually knew ball or not. Well, today I've got my 23-24 predictions up and we are going to go take a look. To be honest with you, can't really remember what exactly I did and what I said. All I know is Sheffield United were definitely bottom. That is genuinely all I can remember. And then at the end, I know Mini Mentor or Simon has done his sort of like comparison that Viz used to do as well, where he's got all of the content creators on like football YouTube, giving them like a point scoring system and we'll see A, whether I'm even on it and B, whether I've done well in comparison to everybody else. But before we get into this with that point system, how exactly did you do? How many did you get wrong? Who did you get right from your predictions at the start of the season? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really does help me out. One subscription equals one chance for Sheffield United to get back into the Prem. And without further ado, we might as well get into 20th place. I don't think there's any point messing about. Working our way up from bottom to top. And in 20th position, I have got the blade. Yeah, it's Sheffield United, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's to be expected, guys. Let's be 100% real. We all knew this was going to happen. Sheffield United, 20th bottom. Um, lost their two best players at the start of the season. In fairness, after I did this video, they did sign a few more players. They did a bit more business in January as well, but they were kind of always doomed from the start, if we're being real. You lot, yeah, listen, I'm directly addressing Sheffield United fans right now. You are going to finish on six points. Yeah, no, that maximum. was crazy. That's a violation, by the way. Sheffield United fans, I wouldn't have that from in the past me. You know what? Six points. With the way they played at some points during the season, that is generous. I'm pretty sure they got relegated in March. How do you get relegated mathematically in March? There is so much football still to be played, bro. And we made a hash of beating them. It took a late comeback for us to beat them in about March as well. I said it before. I'll say it again. Sometimes, yeah, when a team gets relegated, I think there should be like a threshold, like an added rule, where if you don't score a certain amount of points, in a campaign in the league that you were in, you're banned from getting promoted the next time as well. If you're not getting, I, I can't actually remember how many points Sheffield United got in total, but if you're not getting 16 points yet yeah, in the Premier League table, then you are automatically voided of returning back as a Kyoto -Yo club the next season. Gotta take a few minutes to kind of think about what you've done. Go and stand in the corner, Chris Wilder. They were the second of, a, of an average Yeah, bunch. so they finished second in the league. They, finished, they got 91 points, to be fair, last season. It's kind of crazy to imagine that a team could get 91 points and then struggle so much the next year in the Prem. So obviously it goes without saying, I'll be comparing this to the actual Premier League table, right? Sheffield United did in fact finish bottom. I actually predicted Luton to finish 19th, which I'm actually quite surprised about. I genuinely thought I'd predicted Burnley, to be honest, because I, I really wanted Luton Town to stay up. Everything in my mind was telling me of it, like logically speaking, they were not going to do that. If VAR at your ground is on demand television, then we've got to get you out of there. Yeah, look, listen, I, I do hear it, to be fair. I, I do hear it. As well, I, I really want to loot and stay in the Prem, but the whole concept of there being a Wi-Fi password in the tunnel is nuts. You can't be doing that. I wanted it to work so badly. I am genuinely surprised I went like head over heart in this situation. Obviously, by the way, Luton, of course, finished 18th in the league, so I get like one point for that. I got the position wrong by one, so that's like my first point, my first strike or whatever. I'm hoping I can keep it like sort of below like 45 in terms of positions that I'm wrong, like across the whole table. There are going to be some questionable ones, but obviously we'll see. To be fair, Luton did impress me and surprise me in a positive sense. They took a lot of points off a lot of decent teams. They obviously accumulated a lot of points, technically took it to the final day of the season in terms of whether they went down or not, even though it was pretty much done anyway. In that sense, they did more than I expected them to, so Luton fans, you can hold your heads up high, even if your dressing room has like a full kitchen and living room in it. Alright, we move on to 18th, okay? Don't say something stupid. Don't say something... Nottingham Forest. Did I not change my mind? This is this is coming back to me now. I said Nottingham Forest originally, which in fairness, I know they got the points deductions. That's not even a crazy shout given what they did actually finish. 17th. Again, this might be a surprise. I'm putting Wolves. Wolves down the relegation zone. It kind of made sense at the time because like I explained in this video, they sacked their manager like as pre-season was starting or something ridiculous. They lost a lot of players. Didn't recruit really to the point at which I made this video. They kind of signed a few players after and the whole club was in turmoil. Gary O'Neill did a crazy job of turning 
turning them around. I could have ended up with a lot more points added on here because they were 10th or 11th for a lot of the season, but did fall off in the end with Crystal Palace becoming good. They signed a free agent goalkeeper from Northampton Town. They're going down. Nah, fuck it. I'm remixing it. Wolves, 18. Yeah, nah, I thought I did. I thought I did. Yeah, signing a backup goalkeeper from Northampton Town is crazy. I'm not even gonna lie. There's not even any need. Like, at least when teams sign backup goalkeepers, it's usually from a different other big club. To anyone in Northampton, first of all, I'm sorry that you're from Northampton. But second of all, I don't mean to violate you like this, but that is crazy behavior from Wolves. I did actually end up predicting Wolves to finish 18th. They obviously finished 14th. So that's four points added on. I'm guessing I then swapped Nottingham Forest to finishing 17th, which I got bang on. Yeah, exactly. See, I knew what I was doing. That's two right out of the bottom four. We're making moves. For me, their season genuinely relies on whether Sasha Kalajic, an Austrian striker who was out injured all of last year immediately after signing, can hit the ground running. Yeah, I was wrong about that. They literally didn't need him at all. To be fair, like some unexpected names did turn up. Like Mateusz Cunha actually developing into a player that could actually finish chances was a surprise. Wang as well went kind of crazy. Pedro Neto is obviously always there. I feel like they'll lose him. But without Ruben Neves, I am surprised they improved to the level that they did. Gary O'Neill genuinely did a very, very good job. And there was an emergence of decent players. So they, they done well there. So 16th place, we did have Burnley. I am, of course, wrong by three on that one because Burnley finished 19th in the end. I'll be a million percent honest when I was recording this video. A, I did think Wolves were actually maybe going to go down anyway. I also just didn't want to be boring and say all three promoter clubs were going to go back down. It's probably the most obvious thing in terms of promoter clubs that I've ever seen is all three of them going down this year. Like, there was such a genuine gap between the squads of these three promoter teams and the rest of the league that it was so easy to say they'd all go back down. Kind of wish I'd said it now because I would have actually been right, but the game's the game. They've got a good goalkeeper in Dogden's brother. Burnley will be hoping that he doesn't take the gloves off. Like... They just oh, about yeah. have enough. Theo, listen, if you if you if you heard that joke, you didn't hear it. Okay, I wanna <clears throat> so in 15th place, we've got Everton. Flipping heck. Yo, I was actually going crazy with this, by the way. 15th place, Everton. So I've got Everton bang on. Nottingham Forest bang on. Wolves, we don't need to talk about. They weren't there. And Sheffield United bang on. This bottom five, let him cook, man. I see what he's doing. I can see it. I feel it. He's cooking. Obviously, I know for facts that I'm going to get 14th wrong because that's where Wolves finished and I put them 18th. And Arnal Danjuma is a quality wide man. Danjuma, did he even play for Everton once this season? Season, bro. What I will say here is I'm I'm getting lucky with some of these hits because I'm mentioning guys that were so irrelevant to the overall script of the Premier League season. Like I'm talking, they didn't even get a writing credit. These guys weren't even extras in the background. They were like sound assistants for two of the scenes maximum. It is crazy. Like Dan Zuma forgot about completely. Sasha Kalajic got punched by Onana and then said, I'm out of here. Yeah, this is nuts. I'm not going to lie. Everton were poor at the end of last season, 16th in the form table. So will that poor form continue into the start of the league campaign? They did end last season, to be fair, really badly. I kind of was right. And they did have a really shaky spell this year. Obviously, the points deduction didn't help them. They would have finished, obviously, a decent amount higher as well. But they've ended this season really well. So I'm kind of looking forward. Well, I'm not looking forward to what Everton do because I'm a Liverpool fan. But as in, Everton fans should look forward to it as well with some decent players. 14th place, we've got Bournemouth, which means I got this wrong by two. They finished 12th. So drop them a little bit lower. Iriola has done a crazy job. Like, as Gary O'Neill left Bournemouth to go do a mad job at Wolves. His replacement at Bournemouth has cooked as well, to be honest with you. Like, so Solanke have slapped this season. Really good job from them. Fulham, we've got bang on. Lads, no, guys. I might have actually cooked, you know. The teams themselves don't even care whether they finish 13th or 11th, bro. You literally just take all the clubs, yeah? You chuck them up in the air and then just see where they land. That is how the mid-table operates. So the fact that we've actually got two right, technically speaking, in the mid-table is crazy. I want to know why I put as 12. Actually, I know I, I know why I put 12. It was definitely crystal... I mean, they finished ninth, so obviously I'm three places off with that, which is my second worst prediction. I'll be honest, I don't remember Hammers fans being upset with me for this one, but I'm surprised that they weren't, because they made, they made good signings. They brought in James Ward-Prowse, and maybe they hadn't at the point that I made this video. Again, that is always something I think a lot of us as YouTubers, we have to jump the gun. We have to make this video around about the first game of the season, and obviously the transfer window does not end when the season starts, if that makes sense. So you're always flirting with the possibility of a team making 
making six crazy good signings after you've made your predictions video. It does make it a little bit hard, but ultimately in the game that we play, we can't wait until like the 1st of September to make this video because then too many games have happened. You're going to have to strike this balance, maybe doing it after the first game of the season or just before. Either way, it does mean that things can be inaccurate, but West Ham 12 is nuts. Declan Rice has obviously left the club. That is going to leave a massive hole, not only in the dressing room. To be fair, yeah, Declan Rice, I, I do understand my, my reasoning here, but obviously they then signed Edson Alvarez, who's actually been pretty good anyway. Not Declan Rice, but he's been pretty solid. And I swear on my life, if I see McTominay and Suchek in a, in a midfield together, I'm not watching West Ham once this year. Me putting them 12 now makes more sense. They haven't signed Kudas. They haven't signed James Ward-Prowse. That makes more sense. I feel like if I'd known they were going to sign Kudas and Ward-Prowse and that they weren't going to sign Maguire and McTominay, probably would have put them like 10th. That's not terrible though. Okay, we keep it moving. Okay, yeah, Brentford, you fuck me. Brentford, you lot, uh, we need to have words. How did Brentford finish 16th this season? And how is Thomas Frank getting the buy-in job? Maybe, as he's not. But he was getting talked about for that job. They were missing Ivan Tony. Why did I not take that into account? 16th though for them. They cannot have been expecting that before the start of the season. One point behind Everton, they obviously finished uh, on 39. Kind of in no man's land when you take into account the points deduction for Everton. They would have been seven points behind Wolves and seven points ahead of Nottingham Forest. So the most firm 16th place you have ever seen in your lives. Brentford, you let me down. That's five places I was wrong. That's the most so far. The big key thing here, in bolt, no Tony. Yeah, well, why did you not listen, Niran, of the past? Why did you look at that situation and say, no Ivan Tony and think, yeah, they'll be calm? Why did you think that? But Wissa, I mean, and Burmo was injured for a while. Wissa was obviously at AFCON as well, so they did kind of struggle without kind of all of them at one point. Was Wissa at AFCON? Yeah, he must have been with DR Congo. Still didn't expect them to do that badly, I guess. And their new goalkeeper, Flecken. Oh, yeah, Flecken was shit. Yeah, nah. I, I, I keep doing this. I keep saying it was guys that they were signing that were going to be good. They were not good. You can bank on these lot finishing 12th every year. But I'm changing it up. Okay, no, guys. No, I actually, no, I cooked. I genuinely cooked. Crystal Palace never finished 10th, bro. I don't even know if they finished top 10 in Premier League history. As in new Premier League history. Jean-Philippe Mateta single-handedly ma has made me look like I've got ball knowledge. Did I mention him in this entire segment? I can guarantee you that I didn't. This is with the assumption that Roy Hodgson is Crystal Palace manager. Glasner has come in and just done a Roy madness. Roy Hodgson, aged 104, can get a random group of dons from South London into the top half of the Premier Yeah, now that is true. That is true. I, I do remember doing the research for this video and thinking, fucking hell, like the quality is a shocker this year. It's the fact that I even put Brentford 11th without Ivan Tony kind of speaks volumes. West Ham definitely should have been higher, but I knew Everton would be down there. Wolves obviously had kind of, they'd had a crazy start to the season. All the promoter teams as well. So Palace being 10th kind of actually made sense in my head. Underachieved with Roy Hodgson. They have gone absolutely crazy with Glasner. And I'm really excited to see them next season. The squad they've got, Alize Eze Mateta. That link up is nuts at the moment. With Cech Decore coming back. With Gwehi, with Joachim Anderson, nuts, genuinely sick. You know, they've got Ebere Eze, who's a baller, and they've got Michael Elise. Ball knowledge, come on, I knew this was going to happen. All right, P9, their rivals, obviously, Brighton, they, they had a sensational season last time around. They finished 11th, which to me is quite surprising, but they were so bad second half of the year, guys. I don't feel too bad about that one. Got Palace bang on, Brighton two out. Let's keep it moving. Brings us on to the top eight. We're starting... With Tottenham. Okay, yeah, nah, I've, I've, I've fucked it. Tottenham PA. It's the history of the Tottenham. That's harsh, man. That's harsh on Ange Postacoglu. Ah, uh, you know what I realise I've done? I've definitely put Manchester United in the top four. I can't remember uh, at all. Like, I cannot remember a single position from this point onwards. Genuinely, I cannot even remember who I predicted to win the league. So stick around for that. Eighth place Tottenham. It's harsh on Postacoglu, but to be fair, they look like an eighth place team for the final five games of the season. Big Ange did a crazy job at the start of the year. Slightly in the conversation for like maybe finishing in the top three, maybe even going all the way. But things kind of fell apart a little bit. At least they looked like they were going to be nailed on top four. That didn't happen, but I am three wrong here again. No crazy bad ones, to be honest, so far. Like Brentford have fucked me a bit, and so have Wolves. Am I developing as like a football YouTuber? What's actually going on here? It's about 10 years too late, but we take those. Daniel Levy, yeah? Get your bald head on the internet right now and listen to this. Because if you 
you keep Harry Kane for one more season to finish in the Conference League again so that he can leave on a free... I'm going to slap you. Just sell him now. Sell him now. To be fair, wow, I made this prediction before they'd even sold Harry Kane. That's wild. This is what I'm saying. So, like, that is, like, such a big decision, me putting them eighth. I mean, I put them eighth even with Harry Kane, which is crazy. But I think I said it later on in the video. I was kind of expecting them to sell him. By the way, that's nuts. So, sorry, Tottenham fans. I was severely mistaken. We got that one wrong. You lot are actually all right. Just... Obviously, end of the season, pretty poor. Got to strive for Champions League next year. In seventh position, we are going with the Blues. Chelsea P7, kind of proud of. Because I think a lot of people expected Chelsea to kind of bounce back this season. And they have at the end of the year. And then they've sacked Pochettino, which makes no sense at all. Sorry, excuse me a second. We've got to hydrate. One of your five a day, yeah? Shout out the cooperative. This video is not sponsored. But if the co-op do want to sponsor... A lot of people thought Chelsea would bounce back yet. And I was like, nah. I've seen this script before. I've seen Todd Bowley. The squad doesn't blend together still. Again, this was probably before Lavia. This will have been before Caicedo. They'd have bought people like Nicholas Jackson by this point. Listen to this list of players they've got rid of, like Deadwood and stuff. N'Golo Kante, not really Deadwood, but fine. Kalidu Koulibaly, stunk up the place in his first season. Edward Mendy, yeah, this is Ruben a crazy list, Chief. isn't it? Kai Havertz, Mason, Maceo Kovacic. Man, you kind of forget how many players Chelsea actually got rid of at the start of the season. It's no wonder it took them like 11 months to gel together. It's a random group of strangers, bruv. You could walk into a Sainsbury supermarket and there'd be more people that know each other than at the start of the season Chelsea dressing room. It's like bronze team at the start of ultimate team. You just downloaded the game for the first time. This was a fine prediction. I'm happy with myself for this one. Truthfully, Chelsea shouldn't have even finished sixth at all. They should have finished like eighth at best. The rest of the teams around them shut the bed. I will still take this only one point wrong. Doing okay right now, guys. All right, sixth place, we've got Aston Villa. Obviously, crazy job by Unai Emery. I hope everyone else predicted Villa to actually do well because they, they, they slap. They've done well. They've done a crazy job in the transfer window, and I think that's what I was looking at a lot. Newcastle P5, wrong by two spots again here, like Aston Villa, who, of course, obviously finished fourth. Thing is, I'll, I'll be so real. I think Newcastle, what, well, they finished six points behind Tottenham. Without that mental injury crisis where they were missing about 47 players at the same time, they finished fifth a million percent. Once they got, like, a decent portion of their players back, if Isaac plays the whole season, they're finishing fifth. One million percent. They got very unlucky. I think Newcastle fans, I would be feeling positive going into next season. Obviously, you may well have Conference League. Depends on United winning the FA Cup. Your European status depending on a team winning the FA Cup. That does stink. I'll keep it so real. Next season, I think they'll improve. Depends how the transfer window goes, obviously, but if they have another strong one, I would probably predict them to finish top five again. We're on to the top four, and we start with Liverpool. Liverpool fourth. I'm actually kind of surprised a little bit. A, because I'm massively biased. But B, yeah, I suppose, again, the reasons I was kind of listing here, I, I Again, we hadn't signed all of our centre mids by this point. I want to say we'd signed McAllister, but maybe not Zabozlai, or maybe it was Zabozlai, but not Gravenberch. We definitely haven't signed Endo, so we didn't have a DM at this point because we'd obviously sold Fabinho. So I think this kind of makes sense. I'll be real, when the season started, even when we had signed Endo and signed everyone, I wasn't massively convinced. I didn't think we'd be fighting for the title. The fact that we were even in full competition still in April was a massive shock to me because of how our transfer window went. With what we had, had the tools available, I think we still did an all right job apart from the bottle at the end. If you don't offer me third place at the start of the season, I would have taken it. If we sign Romeo Lavia, I actually won't be that concerned because we'll we signed Romeo Lavia. Nero, if only you'd known what tomfoolery Todd Bowley would pull off. Probably thought we might have even got Caicedo these times, but those were simpler times. I was on the way back from a day festival on a bus back from Crystal Palace. I was trying to get signal amongst 685 people on the lower deck, and I was watching Fabrizio Romano tell me that my heart was going to get broken. He was telling me Moises Caicedo, he's a Chelsea fan. Romeo Lavia, very injured, but he He's also apparently a Chelsea fan. Caicedo, here we go. 485 million. The, the details are kind of wrong. It was like e-signal at best, low connection. Some of the digits were wrong. What I'm trying to say is it was a bad time. Caicedo, I think, has been all right for Chelsea. Certainly in the second half of, of this season. Would have loved him. We go again. We need to get a DM for next campaign in my eyes still. Love you, Endo, though. In third place, we're going with Manchester United. Oh, my God, Niren. I said Manchester United would finish above... I don't even care what score I get. I can't lie. I actually don't 
don't care what score I get. That's slander. That is my own bitter rivals above my own team. And I was so wrong. I, actually, no, I'm happy I was wrong. But that's still mad. Obviously, Manchester United finished eighth. Worst finish since, like, 1992. Owed the league goals. Like, goal difference minus one is mad. How they, they were in their overdraft, that is wild. Why did I think this? They've lost Phil Jones. <laughs> Minus to Phil Jones edit, yeah. I can't, man, I was giving them props for Anana. I was giving them semi props for Mason Mount. Oh dear, dearie me. I, honestly, United, thanks for proving me wrong, man. That's all I can say, I appreciate it. Which leaves us with our top two, and ladies and gentlemen, I went with Arsenal. Yeah, so we've got the, the top two right, which obviously has helped. And for those that don't understand what's going on, that means Man City, I predicted them to win the league. Not exactly the most surprising thing in the world, especially given the title race last season. But Arsenal, they had a good transfer window. I was not sure about Kai Havertz then. I'm a bit more sure about him now. Timber and stuff, obviously he got unlucky with the, the injury and stuff. David Raya has been really good this season. I think Arsenal finishing second was like the most obvious prediction in the world, apart from maybe Liverpool. So Manchester City to win the league. Arsenal to finish second, United to finish third, and Liverpool fourth. You see, none of you can now say yet that I'm biased against United. You can't say that. Because in your worst ever Premier League season, I said that I actually had faith in you. I was wrong, but I said that I actually had faith in you. That's your top four that I predicted. Newcastle, Villa, Chelsea, then Tottenham top eight. Brighton and Palace rounding at the top 10. So the main ones that I've got wrong here, Manchester United obviously predicted third, they finished eighth, right? Newcastle and Villa, two wrong. Tottenham, wrong by three, a little bit more. Brentford, wrong by five, that's a big one. And then what? I guess Wolves, wrong by four as well. But Sheffield United, right. Forest, right. Everton, right. Fulham, right. Crystal Palace, right. I'm actually quite proud of the fact, I think I've got like seven correct there, which is more than what I would usually get. So we're gonna go compare now, see whether I've done okay compared to other YouTubers, and we're gonna we're gonna get amongst this. I can in fact confirm, ladies and gentlemen, that Simon did compare YouTubers at the end of his video. As you can see, he he's got two different scores for some reason, but he got 46, and then Randy got 48. I'm loving everyone predicting Sheffield United to finish bottom. Again, no offense, Sheffield United. We had to do it. Yeah, it's nothing. It's not the impersonal. Theo okay. Baker. Now he has a football podcast that gets slated for all his football opinions. No offense to Theo Baker, I've been on pitch side. If I do lose to Theo Baker, I will probably have to question my entire existence. He got 46. I actually haven't tallied up the score that I got, by the way, according to this, because didn't want to give it away. So I don't know what score line I've got. So I'm just going to be hearing these numbers going off and then we're just going to see what happens, I guess. 44, okay. So Reeve, big, big man, would never disagree with one of Reeve's opinions because his bicep and triceps are bigger than my entire life expectancy. Reeve, if you win, props to you, man. Uh, big, big love and big respect. Lewis got 50. Tom got 54. Tom's the one that everyone says actually knows ball. If I get less than 50, I'll take that. Dogden and Dogden's dad, who did have different opinions, but they ended up with the same score. Big 38. 38? I dare, dare sweat, man. Dogden and Dog dad are sweats, man. They've gone to every league game of the last 11 months simultaneously. I'm talking, they're setting up Zoom calls and analyzing together. So I don't think that counts. If, if I've lost to them, then I don't even mind. Genuinely. Okay, yeah, Ginge getting 64 is a madness. He didn't even put Sheffield United at bottom. Diver did Viz. Oh, Viz, we need to have words. If Viz had actually put Sheffield United at bottom, he might have won this whole thing. But Wolves in the relegation zone, I like, because I was obviously also thinking that too. Last two, we have F and G. Lads, I did make it. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate Thank you. I actually made it onto this list, so that's sensational. We've got Danny Aarons here as well. Now, Danny Aarons, I don't know if he even watches football anymore, to be honest. He got Burnley ninth. That was 10 points. Burnley ninth is a madness. But, uh, Danny, I'm sorry, man. I hate to say this, but I respect the, the psychopathic behavior required for that, man. Next year, I might just do foolishness. Because genuinely, there's some seasons where if you do madness like that, you will actually get rewarded for it. Bro was distracted. He, Danny Aarons had a lot of things going on this year, man. He didn't have time. Bro just saw the, the play Pieces that he liked and just put them in that order. FNG, right? FNG, Man City, Arsenal. Oh, Man come United on. got him five points. But the okay, right. Did I get five points? Did I say five or did I say four? I can't count, guys. I'll be 100% honest. Liverpool 1, Newcastle 2, We're going through this. Chelsea Look at this. This is all right. 2, 0. Brentford seem to fuck everyone over. Yeah, that's true. 3, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 1, 0. Yeah, Great Wolves score me dirty. the winner of this year's Premier League predictions with 34 points. Are you mad?
bad. I want the whole thing. Oh, now I'm a sweat. Oh my days. Nah. For all the people that said I don't have ball knowledge, listen to this. 34 points. Oh, I have to go outside, man. I actually need to go outside. Genuinely, that's crazy. That's actually mad. So I've got the best out of everyone. That is unbelievable. Jesus. Come on. This is bare analysis as well by Simon. All the positions got points and whatever. I'm bemused. Man, I said that about Togden and his dad and now I'm... I am a nerd. That's crazy. I am everything that I didn't want to be. But honestly, I'm proud. I will take that. Well, love to Simon. I appreciate him including me in this. That's absolutely sick. I will take the victory. Thank you very much. I appreciate you in the back. My guy love to you. I would love to say I'll hold on to this crown for next season. I'm going to try and work hard to make sure that I do, but truthfully, I usually get about 78 points in these sorts of things. When Viz has done them in the past, I'm like firmly 8th out of 9. It's a turn up for the books. It's an underdog story. This is Claudio Ranieri winning the league with Leicester, but we take those, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, let me know what your predictions were down in the comments. We which is the most egregious from my set? Which is the most egregious from everybody else's set that you saw just there? Let me know down in the comment section as well. Shout out to Simon. Obviously, you know who he is, but the video is linked down in the description below. If anyone else has made this video too, you'll be able to check that out down in the description below. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta and on TikTok as well. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a sensational day. Enjoy yourselves. Your boy knows ball in a bit.